Yeah, so everything on all right, on all right day. Check in the volume. All right, we should be in the game now. The only thing is this chat play. Let's wait for some people to come online. And they say something, let me know already. All right, I see six people online. So we start enough with is with the mathematics syllabus. Because it's a crash course, so we're going through everything. Veronique Andrews, I see you. And I know a lot of people never, ever, ever, ever look at the mathematics syllabus. But if you really want to study it in depth, you would look at this syllabus. What we're doing tonight is you see section one here. Number theory and computation, we're doing that. Section two here, consumer arithmetic, we're doing some of that as well. And section six, algebra, we're doing that. So let's look at section one. Format of exams, la yeah 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 yeah. You can feel free to ask questions anytime. Will we be looking at circle theorem? Yes, we'll be looking at circle theorem, but not today. Alright, so in number theory, let's see the general objectives. On completion of the section, students should demonstrate computational skills, be aware of accuracy. Yeah, this is their objectives. Let me see what they want us to learn. Distinguish among the set of numbers. So you see these, your natural numbers, the symbols for natural numbers, whole numbers, and integers. You need to understand what these symbols are. N, W, C, um, rational numbers, Q. Irrational numbers, you need to remember those as well, and real numbers. You also need to be able to put the set, each of them in a set. Like you see, you start off with natural numbers. Natural numbers are like your counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'll be racing through this because we're going to get to the questions. Whole numbers will be same as natural numbers, but you include 0. So this is like a subset of this. Integers will be all of whole numbers, but you're also including positive and negative integers. A uh, rational number would be, would start to bring in fractions into the dance. Yeah, so we're going in in depth. We'll go through functions, we'll go through circle theorem and thing, but not tonight. Tonight we're focusing on arithmetic and algebra. We're starting off in order. So I'll knock off everything um, within the next four or five days. Uh, real numbers, the union of rational and irrational numbers. Oh yeah, I skipped out irrational numbers, irrational numbers are numbers that you can't really put in a form like this. They just have some recurring decimals like the square root of 2 and pi are the prime examples they always talk about there. So make sure you know that. And you see this? This comes in your multiple choice. You understand? Natural numbers, a subset of whole numbers, subset of integers, subset of um, rational numbers, subset of real numbers. Let's keep going. Number two, compute powers. So you need to understand how to do your powers, include your square, square root. This is basically the part where you need to understand how to use a calculator. I hope I left my calculator here so we can be able to do the questions, right? So this calculator, um, 
Is the one you need to get. I know I kind of dark right now. Let's see if I can get a little more light on myself. Right, so this calculator is a nice one you could use, but any scientific calculator will do. Alright, so evaluate numerical expressions as number three, convert in fractions to percentage and decimals. All those common question one, factors and multiples, HCF, LCM, you need to understand how to use HCF and LCM. HCF and LCM. See the value of a digit of a num numeral in a given base. Okay, see this number seven here, this is important. And hopefully we can get to some of that tonight. Bases. Right? Um, and I'll show you what I think CXC wants you to know for bases. Because bases came in January. Convert from one set of units to the other. One set of units to another. So you convert in 12 hours, 24 hours metric scales, convert in um not not imperial but like so you're going from meters to kilometers and stuff like that you need to know to do that this is the most common thing you're going to see in question one this significant figures and decimal places uh i hope you all could see the words but nobody's saying anything so okay using properties of numbers and operations in computational tasks um calculate any fraction so that's about it there. So you're basically looking at fractions, percentages, decimals, everything involved in that. That's what number theory and computation is really about. Number theory and computation, all those stuff. And you see this, this is something that doesn't come so often, and we'll see this in one or two questions. Ratios. And when it comes, people, <coughs> people get messed up. Bad, 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 bad. I will be going live online every night, same time. Order a set of real numbers, you need to know how to put them in order. Basically, change all of these things to decimals and then find out which one is in order. Uh, right now, we are looking at the syllabus and then we're going into questions. I know lots of people just love to see the questions, but it's important to know exactly what you need to know. Compute terms of a sequence given a rule. This really comes in the sequences and series. Derive an appropriate rule, da 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 da. So this comes in sequences and series. We wouldn't be doing that, but you see the ratio. We'll do some questions on that. Prepare yourself, and in my prediction, I think ratios could touch down on earlier in 2019. So watch out for that. All right, number theory and computation continue. That's the end of that. That's the end of number theory and computation. Then you go into consumer arithmetic, and we'll be doing consumer arithmetic tonight as well. Consumer arithmetic. Watch all the stuff we have in consumer arithmetic. Discount, sales tax, profit and loss, percentage profit and loss. Um, solve problems involving that. Then you have higher purchase and mortgage mortgages. We have stuff on salary and utility bills. Simple interest, compound interest, appreciation and depreciation. Some problems involving measures and money. In, we're talking about currency conversion in that. Rates and taxes, utilities, invoices and shopping bills, salary and wages, insurance and investment. So you see this topic, a lot of the topics you can learn the questions from the past people. This topic, because it has so much different ways they could bring it, it's nice to have a textbook and you go through each one and you make sure you have questions on each one. But we'll do as many as the past papers would allow. Uh, appreciation, depreciation, compound interest, simple interest, currency exchange, those come a lot. Last year we had the the question on wages with Jenny and Sammy and those. That question true for other people. Insurance and investment is another one. All right, so that's it for consumer arithmetic. But don't underestimate consumer arithmetic. We're not doing sets. We're going straight along into skipping those things, skipping statistics, skipping and landing in algebra. Algebra is the last thing we're going to do for tonight. Algebra consists of a lot. And algebra like salt, it's in every part of the mathematics. So this is a long grind for tonight, and eh? we may end up past 12 or further. You could always go and sleep. I know some people are still already planning to, you know, have their popcorn and their book and their pen and the paper, and they're ready to go through the whole night, and I'm just here to help you study, and my goal is to try and make as many people pass the C-Sec math as possible. 
um, students should be able to use symbols to represent numbers. So let's just take a quick look at what the exact what exactly they want you to do in algebra. Using symbols to represent numbers, well, that's the basic basic tenant of algebra there. Changing algebraic symbols and translating between algebraic symbols the worded equation, vice versa. Evaluate arithmetic operations involving algebra algebraic terms and directed numbers, meaning negative numbers. When you bring in negative numbers across, multiply by negative numbers. Number four, simplify algebraic expression using the four basic operations. Four basic operations, multiply, divide, subtract, add. So using um, expressions using those, simplifying expressions using that, especially if you have a fraction, like an algebraic fraction, substitute numbers for variables in algebraic expressions. Evaluate expressions involving binary operations <coughs> other than the four basic operators. So a binary operator as well, like when you have the star, they say A star B and they tell you what the star does. Hopefully we see some questions on that. And I have videos on that as well. I have videos on a lot of these topics. Apply the distributive law to factorize or expand algebraic expression so you need to understand how the distributive law works this is the when you have one thing outside or this is when you have two and that's common in algebra we're going to do a lot of algebraic questions we write a quadratic expression in this form this comes in the second part of functions when in, in question eight this is called completing the square solve quadratic equations you need to understand how to factorize and complete the square to solve quadratic equations and you think it done no it ain't done more algebra if I see my clock pen and thing, I kill it mostly too. <laughs> solve, solve word. Did you save the live stream later, so save this video after. Yeah, the video will be saved. I won't delete it. I won't make a pay to watch it or anything. It'll just be right there. So you save in the live after. Yes, I'm saving it. Solve word problems, linear equation, simultaneous equations, quadratic equations. You see this? Word problems. This is traditionally the hardest one in algebra. Eh? Like they bring that at the end, they have a question and they say Sam does this and that and you need to form an equation or maybe form a simultaneous equation. Uh, people run into problems with that and when CXE sends their evaluation, that question is always um, done poorly. Solve a pair of equations in two variables when one equation is quadratic or not. So this is a simultaneous equation where one is non-linear and one is linear. And a lot of stuff people can't do this. They could do these simultaneous for two linear equations, but when one has a squared, problems. Hopefully we get to some of that. Prove two algebraic expressions to be identical. Equations with such identities. Uh, represent direct and inverse variation symbolical, symbolically. So this is this is directly and inversely proportional. This one would where you're proving two equations is where if this is equal to that, then you'll solve for one, maybe a coefficient that they left out. <clears throat> if you don't understand the terminologies I'm using here, don't worry. You could always watch over the video after you go and study. Or you could, uh, when we start to do the questions, some of these terms will, will get um, become a little more apparent here. Remember, this is a crash course, and I'm going to explain what coefficient mean. In the, and I'm going to explain everything in depth. Solve problems involving direct variation and inverse variation. So I think that brings us to an end there. I think that brings us Oh, algebra continue. What is this? What is this? No, that's just, that's just teaching advice there. So that's the end of algebra. So that's your syllabus. What do you all think about the algebra, algebra syllabus? I see 46 people online. Good to see all of you all. Zayek, Zayak, Annie, Samantha, Yannick. Keys, Kaswi, Tutorials 1, 2, 3, Burn, Jayadev, some, some names here, brother. Alright, so good night, everybody. We on board. So what we're going to do is pass papers like rain. I already set out some pass papers here for you all, for us. We're just going to be knocking off some past papers here tonight. It's going to be a long session. It's, all right. it's, it's now 9, 9.06. This is the first past paper here. I can turn off this a little small bit of this.
Right, so this is the first pass paper here. Using a calculator otherwise, evaluate 5.24. So, those in the comments, same time every night, same time every night. This paper is 2007, January. Take out all your calculator, take out your pens, get ready. Do this question. Hopefully you can see it there, yeah, because I can see it on my phone in a small screen here. I can see it on my phone in a small screen. So, if you can't see it, Hey, what's going on with my phone? Hey, that's right here with it. Anyhow, if you can't see it, you need to get a new phone. <laughs> Alright, so 5.24 into 4 minus 1.6. So we have some calculator stuff there. Now the trick with this question is to make sure that they don't say put it to some decimal places or that they don't say put it to um, significant figures or express your answer in standard form. So I should be seeing answers popping up by now, eh? Number one, A part one, part I. Take out all the calculators and start to give me some answers. The, the sum of money. Shared. You see part B? Ooh, a ratio question. A ratio question. That's why when and when I go back in the years, you start to see the real exciting questions. Like 2007, 2006, 2005, 2004. You see the ex I did exams in 2005. All right. Um, now, they didn't say to, to write your answer to any significant figures or anything, right? So what you want to do is give them it exact. So the correct answer is what you need to have there. So Samantha, do go and... Um, and, and you put 12.20, you're going to put 12.21. So we have the answer for the first one. This is equal to 12.2092. Next one. Y'all, when you're doing this answer, you don't put it in significant figures unless they, they say to do so. Next one, 2.1. Everybody getting 2.1. 1.68. You see, the beauty about this calculator that I'm using, you just type in your things just so not like, and it works out. What are y'all getting? I've seen <coughs> some people saying 2.21, and some people saying 2.1, and some people saying 12.2. Oh, that's the first one. Right, we finished the first one. Next, second one now. Um, A part 2. 2.1, 2.1, 2.1. So 2.1 is good. Or if somebody put 21 over 10, you'll get the answer correct. So you can put 2.1 or 21 over 10. Great. Next question. How are we going to do this ratio? A sum of money shared between Aaron and Betty in the ratio 2 to 5. Aaron received $60. How much money was shared altogether? The first thing you need to note is this. That's the ratio. How much money was shared altogether? So what's the idea for part B? How do you do a ratio question? The number one thing you want to do in a ratio question is find out the total. So you need to add up the sum of these parts. So like if this was 4 to 10, you want to add up that and it means you must share 14 parts. Now this is this is SEA kind of work here. Now you see how dread SEA come this year. So um, we have 2, 5. You need to add up the 25 and you'll get 7 parts. You also need to be aware of who is what. So Aaron is 2. Aaron is 2. And Betty is 5. So this 2 rep this two is represented by 60. 
So the key here was reading the whole question. I didn't even read the whole question. I just know automatically. So everybody getting 210. Great. I just know automatically in a ratio question you want to add up the sum of the parts. That is that somewhere along the line you're going to do that. So 2 and 5, 2 and 5, 7. So that's 7 in all. So like maybe if they give you the total amount of money they had, you'd have to divide and figure out what to find for one part then. In the end here you're going to find for one part too. And here's how you're going to find for one part. You see, Aaron gets two parts, so it means the number two, two parts, represent $60, which means one part of the ratio would represent 60 over 2, which is $30. Ah, here, it must help. <laughs> um, this means... And once you find for one part, it's simple. If she gets five parts now, five parts, it'll be five by 30. What's going on here? Right, five by 30, and then you add up, or seven by 30, to get the total. And that's how everybody gets 210. Any questions? Because we're looking to move on here. Once you find for one part, remember that Whoever studying now, remember that you're looking at in a ratio questions. Your aim is normally to find for one part, and most of the time you'll be adding up the sum of the parts in the question. So that's a little tip in ratio there. Part C in St. Vincent, three liters of gasoline costs EC um, 10.40. Three liters cost that. So one of the checking consumer arithmetic, a lot of the time you'll be finding for one. Calculate the cost of 5 liters of gasoline in St. Vincent. State in your answer correctly in your ascent. So that's a little, that's a little easy thing. Eh? So go ahead and look at that. Um, the tips was anybody who don't understand. 3 liters cost this amount. So you find out how much 1 liter will cost. You know, they divide. Always find for 1. And then find out how much 5 liters will cost. So the 5 liters... Say a statement will actually look something like this. Uh, 3 liters equal, and I know this amount for liters. Eh? Let me just put L. 3 liters equal 1040. So therefore, 1 liter would be equal to 1040 divided by 3. Right? And 5 liters, how much max again for this way? And that's the next thing I'm all going back in the past when you're doing your past papers. The questions went for more max, so they're asking you a whole heap of thing now. You get more for the price I want. So it's better for revision to go back and look at years from 2005 to 2010. That don't mean leave out, leave out the earlier years, eh? leave out the later years, I mean. Um... Divided by 3, multiply by 5. And that answer is what? Everybody gets 17.33? Right, I could work with that 17.33. That's to the nearest cent, though. To the nearest cent. You all sure about that to the nearest cent? Let me just double check. So those are the things you have to pay attention to. Uh, 17.3 recurring. So yes, it's 17.33 to the nearest cent. Now you need to do a little conversion here. Next part of the question, how many liters of gasoline can we bought for $50 in St. Vincent? Give your answer correct to the nearest whole number. Oh, there's no conversion here. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm so thinking this is going to be a conversion question. How many liters of gasoline can be bought for EC fifty dollars? So they they do not really reverse. Big up to Cuba East. Big up to all the different schools. I know. Last time we were live, we had some from Fatima. We had some from Hillview. That's for the Admats live. And the next, so the next answer, how many liters of gasoline can be bought for EC $50 in St. Vincent? 
Yeah, big up Mr. Hussein. QRC, QRC, big up on yourself. Uh, although a little need no help to big up on yourself. <laughs> um, people getting 14 liters. Uh, let me see if the answer is something all right. 3 by 5, 3 by 5, 15, yeah, 14. That's something, that's something correct. To the nearest whole number, 14. Now, how did you get your answer? All right, so three liters cost ten forty. So you'll do it another way. Um, all right, in on top of the question here, so I hope everybody could understand this. This time you want dollars now, so you'll be like ten point four zero is equal to three liters. Now that's not looking good. I'll go to a new page. I mean, it digital. I have three pages here, so but I'll just be having to go backward and forward, backward and forward. I was trying to spin. So. You had 10.40 equal 3 liters, so $1 will be equal 3 divided by 10.40, so $50, 3 divided by 10.4 times 50. Hit them your calculator there. And the answer that I'm getting is 14 point, if you hear crying, I think that's my son in the background. 14.42, but he's all right. He's one is written. So 14.42, and that, we want it wrong enough to the nearest whole number, so it's 14 uh, liters, 14 liters. So the, the aim in these style of questions is, you see that, this, this number here, find for one. So I want you to write that down. Find, especially if you're weak in this, for one. So these style of questions where you have this and you have to find that, you just find for one. You arrange it in such a way that you find how much for one dollar or you find how much for one liter and you go forward. You go forward with your life. Let me go to the next. Hey, and just like that, we finish the whole of question one for January. Um, yeah. Give me a little second here. All my slides to switch, and I just do want to switch right now. Right. So this is question two. People who want help with vectors and things, y'all be coming to the hard stuff, but I need to go in order. Tonight, we're going consumer arithmetic, arithmetic, and algebra. So I know a lot of people probably strong in this already, but some people are weak in it. And it's good practice for, for y'all to get to do it, do it as well. All right, so this question, everybody take out your pen and paper. Make sure your pen and paper, your calculator, out. do this question, do this whole thing. Big up to the guy, guy and I in the house. LGHC, big up. BHS, Tobago, big up. Big up, Mr. Hossein, SGEI. Big up. Woodbrook, how they? The vectors and matrices. Yeah, vectors and matrices will most likely come the day after tomorrow. Or tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be doing construction. Construction and, yeah, construction and vectors and matrices. Functions coming down to the end, down to the end, and then, 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 then. Six, everybody gets six. So all of these are simple substitution questions. You put A is two by negative three. Take away B is negative three by c is 4, put this directly into your calculator, so 
So I'm putting two. Um, let me just see if you all could see this calculator, by For those who would be interested in this, this calculator, do you know it want? Oh boy, I had a pretty light back, so I don't remember that for the next day. But I think everybody get the answer for that. Some people say negative 6. Some people say 6. Some people say negative 6. What going on there? Negative 12? What going on there? <laughs> Calculator fees and all that. So that's how you're putting it in. 2 by negative 3. Take away. I'm picking up myself there. By negative 3. Um... For directly putting numbers like this into your calculator. Hopefully, you see that there. Hit equal. And yes, yeah, 6. So, anybody who say negative 6 on Jones. Alright, so that was 6. This one, negative 3. So, it's a substitute. This is the substitution line, right? A was 2. Take away C is 4 to B squared. Now you can put this directly into your calculator again. Let's make sure you pay it properly. So I'm putting negative 3, 2, take away 4 to B squared. And it looks like this. Uh, like that. I press equal. I get negative 12. So everybody good with that. Negative 12. Yeah, I didn't videos this year in chemistry. Um, in chemistry, what did I plan to do this year? I think I plan to do everything on moles. So last year I did everything in organic chemistry. I might do everything on moles this year in chemistry. I'll do some stuff on physics. I will do most of the ADMAT syllabus as well. Mm, I'm thinking about doing a crash course for ADMAT next week. But not live though, so that one will actually happen in real. Okay, negative twelve. Can't see your calculator. I can't see the calculator. Or all right, well I'm gonna make myself a little bigger. There, I'm bigger in the screen now. So this is how you put the numbers in directly into your calculator. Remember, there's a different symbol for negative in these kind of calculators, right? So a lot of people put takeaway and uh, mix up the negative there. And then you put equal. When you get equal, your answer would be um, negative 12. All right. Next part. That, that easy. Let me move on. In this question, there's a, what we call an algebraic fraction. A fraction involving an algebraic 2, involving a variable. So you need to find the LCM of these two numbers and work along. So let's do it on this side here. <coughs> x2 plus x2. So you have x over 2 plus x over 3 equal to 5. Find the LCM of 2 and 3, which is 6. <coughs> then you tell yourself 2 could go into 6 3 times. So it will be 3 times x. Then you tell yourself 3 could go into 6 2 times. Since there's a plus there, it's a plus. So it'll be 2 times x equal 5. And what next? You want to take this and multiply. So you will have 5x is equal to 5 by 6. Which should be equal to 30. You have 5x there. x is equal to 30 over 5. So that's why I see in 6 popping up there. Well done, genius kid. You're right through, but you're paying any work, but you're making sure you're make, you're making sure and kill them all. I don't know some people, some of my subscribers going to merit in this exam because they're here right through. If I'm doing anything for Intisai, nah, not this year. For the real shine in here where I could damage and already light, but. Sanjay from the class on Monday. Yeah, big up to all the people who has a new Monday class. We had lots of fun in that class. That's okay, I was going to make us that you be more. So let me move forward. 
This here is an inequality. And with inequalities, we treat them the same. We treat them just like an uh, equation. Except they have two things you need to watch out for inequalities. Two things. What shall the two things you watch out? If you multiply by a negative number, a negative, so you're making notes of this. If you multiply by a negative number, there's something going to happen. Or if you swap the entire left and right, this stands on left hand side and right hand side. Oh, yeah. This is and here. Am I actually right and and right hand side? If you swap the entire left hand side and right hand side or you multiply by a negative number, whatever way the inequality sign was facing, you'd have to flip it the next way. That's how inequalities work. A quick little example, like if I have negative 3, x greater than 6, when I bring across a negative 3, I'll be divided by a negative number. So if I, I should put say multiply or divide, right? But you know divide is really a style of multiplication. So if I divide or multiply by a negative number, this will be x6 over negative 3. This, this sign here can't stay like that. That sign can't stay like that. It has to actually swap like this. Sorry, swap like this. So it has to actually turn around. So that's the trick with inequalities. Uh, and the next, so that's, that's, for, that's for the first rule. And next uh, example of the second rule is... If I had like x on this side and I have 6 there and I put the x on this side, you notice how the fat side is facing the x, the fat side still needs to face the x. So when I change around the whole left hand side and right hand side, it needs to switch like that. So those are the two things you need to look out for inequalities. Other than that, just treat it like a normal, like a normal equation. So go ahead, go ahead and solve this. Eighty nine people online. Wow, that's amazing. Eighty nine students all over the Caribbean learning maths. Blessings to everybody. So we'll have four minus x so thirteen. We have negative x. Then across that four. 9, negative x. Right, so you see we have, a little, we have a little situation taking place here. We have a little situation taking place here. So Christian, you would not, you would not get a correct boy. Genius, you would not get a correct. You all put in the wrong sign. Wrong sign. When you bring in across this negative one, so people know to take this negative one and hit them to, on the nine, right? People know to multiply by, some people learn it as multiply by negative one. Some people learn it as just bringing across a negative one. But it's a negative number. And what I told you about the negative numbers, when you move them, when you move them, a whole negative number, the sign would have to switch. So... This is actually the answer. Remember that, all right? Well done, kicks. Remember that. So this is how it looks. Now, just a little side note. If you had something like this, negative 6 plus x is greater than 2. If I bring across this negative 6, because it's just addition and subtraction, the sign would still remain the same. Eh? It will still be 2 plus 6. It, it, the sign only switches when you multiply or divide. When you multiply or divide in my number and then you bring it across, then it will switch. So like if the negative is here, and I bring it across, it doesn't switch. The sign still humble himself and behave. But if, when I reach down here, there was a negative sign there now, negative 2x, and I try to bring him across, remember he's multiplying by the x problems. Problems, problems, problems. All right. So, 
What next? The cos of one muffin is m. The cos of three cupcakes is 2m. Write an algebraic expression. You see this? Word to algebra. Word to algebraic expression. Skill some people. Write an algebraic expression in m for the cos of five muffins. Well, if one muffin is m, five muffins is going to be 5m. And the cos of three cupcakes is 2m. So they actually told you this. That three cupcakes... Is equal to 2m but sometimes they can say three cupcakes is twice the cost of one muffin all right so just another way to look at it three cupcakes is equal to 2m so what about six cupcakes six is actually twice three so this will be equal to 4m so don't go and put any other way thing like try and multiply six by this because remember it was actually three cupcakes is 2m. So the answer is 4m. 4m. Write an equation in terms of m to represent the following information. The total cost of 5 muffins and 6, six cupcakes is 31. So 5 muffins and 6 cupcakes. You see, look, I go up a 6 day. 4 4m, which would mean 6 cupcakes. Is equal to 31.50. So you write the expression and you walk away with your maths. You parallel that assigned there too for the people. Alright. So yeah, Elliot, problems there wasn't 6 by 2m. Joanna Rogers was asking me the sign changes. Yeah, the sign will change. The sign change um, on, on the 9. Because there was, it, you, you could imagine a negative one there. So when it came across, it was like 9 divided by negative 1, which is actually negative 9. So the sign would switch there. I think we're ready for the next question. This is 2009 me, question 1. Give me the answer for question 1 in a fraction. Once again, you could put in a calculator direct, if you have a pretty good calculator. 2009, me. Answer for question one. Now, why should I read you some of these fun questions? Whoa, 113 people online. What is this? We out here, we out here. Grind in. 9.34. Let me see how much people will be online when it starts to reach around 11 o'clock and thing. Reach four of them. Let me see how, how it will go. All right. <laughs> Some people from the last stream, boy. oh my gosh. And they don't bring back that behavior here. We need waiting from yesterday. We out here, we out here. All right, so they give me some answers there. 1A, one, one 2009 me. Now, if you have a whole past paper booklet, that will come in real handy. Now, I know some of y'all, two and a half, two and a half is the answer. Two and a half. Some of y'all probably done had the urge to go on Instagram and watch some messages or check some notifications and things. That's where that addiction is killing you. You have the stamina to just keep going, 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 going. I mean, you take a little breaks and thing, but don't let social media distract you. When you're studying, just keep going. Some of y'all, you have no stamp, max stamina, you do one... Oh, you do 30 minutes and that's and Isaac, you're dead. So we're getting 5 over 2. Giving your answer as a fraction. So our mixed number here is a little, little fishy. I would have leave it as an improper fraction, which is a type of fraction. Alright? Um, yeah, but mixed number is supposed to be correct as well. Um, so let me put this directly into my calculator. All our trust you all are seeing plenty. Everybody who say 2.5... They want the answers a fraction. Read, make sure you read the whole questions. Eh? I am guilty of that sometimes. You see the question and you get so excited you just started with. Make sure you read down to the end and make sure you didn't see no. In this first question, they'll always, they most of the time they'll ask you to give it in some way. They will either ask you to give it in exact form, which means basically leave it as a fraction or as a decimal with all the decimals. 
right? If you had to do some square root or something. Exact form, or they'll ask you about decimal places, or they'll ask you about significant figures, or to leave your answer in a fraction. So make sure you read the entire of this question. They, want, they, they normally want the answer in a certain way. Three and three quarter over. Everybody getting five and two, and I even went and bought it to look it up. All right, let's go on to the next one. So the answer for this was five and two. Now, when you're showing you're working for this, I advise students. You see how this is three marks? I advise students, you just go and write equal five and two. Although this is supposed to be a calculator question, show how you do it. So you, you make this mixed number into improper fraction. Three by four is 12 plus three. Uh, 15 over 4, you have, you would write numerator equal 15 over 4, then you're going to write denominator, I know, but I need to write properly here, and you change these to mixed numbers, 2 by 3 is 6, 7 over 3, take away 5 over 6, you will call this, you get your answer, and then in the end, you come and say, therefore, and then have the numerator divided by the denominator. Then you change this to multiply. You invert whatever fraction the denominator was. Whatever fraction you got for the denominator, you invert it. And you multiply and you get your an answer. But always put it in your calculator and make sure you get the, first, the answer first. Um, yeah, this lessons, this cla these class, online classes start at nine o'clock every day. Um, One dollar and thirty-five. Barbados means Barbados dollars, and AC means Eastern Caribbean dollars. Karen exchange two thousand Bajan for twenty-seven hundred EC. So that the exchange rate there. Calculate the value of one Bajan to EC. Well, you come and you say 2,000, once again is a fine for one kind of thing. Um, so 2,000 of the Bayesian would be equal to 2,700 of the EC. So uh, normally when you write in Bayesian and EC, they write it in front of the number, but for some reason they write it in behind, so now they're looking kind of weird. You find for one. To find for one, it will be 2700 over um, 2,700 over, yeah, because they want Bayesian in EC divided by 2,000, and that's where everybody gets 1.35. Next part of the question, some people get 320. When you're going through differentiation and integration, the next big thing that I'm doing in AdMath is supposed to be that. So you know, you know, I had a big video going through the whole of trigonometry that all the AdMath students love. I'm going to do that for the AdMath again, for you all, for the people. All right, so this was 1.35. That's what the calculator say. Yeah, that's, that makes sense because half of 7 is 3.5. So 1.35. 320 for the next part. If current exchange EC... And I now realize my battery on my phone going and die, uh, it's on 26%, so I don't know how long that will last, maybe. I'm going to load down the brightness a little bit. Hopefully we'll be able to last some good time. Thank you so much, God's plan. You all get into, some people get to two over 18 for the first one. Yeah, make me go back up to that first one, right? And the first one was 5 and 2. Well, you get five, look at people get 5 and 2. You get 30 over 18, which is 5 and 2, right? 30 over 18 is 5 and 2. Well, that's 5 and 3. 30 over 18. What going on there, boy? Problem is in that weekend. You had to send me like a picture that weekend sometime or something. Yeah. Anyhow, so 320 for the next one. If current exchange for Bayesian, calculate the amount of Barbados that she receive. Well, you just go out, you just keep going ahead. You already find the exchange rate, which is which is key. You find one equal. Am I already thinking properly? 
So I just pay that one is equal to EC 1.35. That's the established exchange rate. What are we trying to find out? I'll pay the amount of Barbados dollars she will receive for, for this amount of EC. Well, it means I need to write the EC in front. I need to write the EC in front now. So I'll be like I'll be like 1.35 EC is equal to one Bayesian dollars. So therefore one EC will be like one over 1.35. And if I want to find 400 and 432. If I want to find 432, I'll have to multiply this by 432. So hopefully that's why everybody did there. And you get the answer. Let's see if I get the same answer. Three hundred and twenty. Yes, we get it. We live in life. So all the three hundred and twenty people out and bad. So this was three hundred and twenty. Next part, the credit union. So there's a little compound interest, and you have to do it for two years. Seeing people then looking up that question already. A credit union pays 8% per annum compound interest and our fixed deposit is 2400 so that the principal. Okay, let's write down some things. Let's highlight some things. This is the principal, this is the interest. And this is the amount of time we go in. You can use the compound interest formula, but for CXC, uh, not a, you don't need to go through that. You don't need to go through that, my brother. So let's just get a clean page here. Um, I forget them numbers, but <laughs> 24,000 and 8%. So... The interest after first year, so this is how you do it, would be 8% of the principal, right? Which was 24,000. That number, you add that and you create a new principal. This number, which is 0.08. Out of 24. This number is 1920. So, which means the new principal or the amount after the first year. A big one, you could relax. The amount after the first year is 24 plus now. One nine two zero. Which is two five nine two zero. Yeah, why did I put that in my calculator? Focus going. And you do it again? And everybody getting 27, 27993. What time does finishing? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, I'll spell principle wrong. This principle is spelled like principle. Anyhow, so you will call the 8% of that now, interest after second year. Look at that beautiful handwriting. It multiply by this. And you got wood. You see your interest rising? You see your compound interest is a beautiful thing. Or in Buffett, them boys know this thing, boy. So and now your final amount after which is this this is the answer here. 
So the amount after two years, just like the new principal, if it was going on again, would be equal to equal to and you add up these two guys. Two five nine zero plus twenty seven three point six equals put in your calculator and you get that same answer that everybody gain two seven nine nine three six yeah two seven nine nine three point six That's the amount. So, and that's the end of the first question in May 2009. So we do. Uh, this is the, that's the third question. We finish there. 2009, still in the January 2009, I think, or May 2009, whatever. Um, question two. Go ahead and do that one. Yeah, so 2009, we did 2009. I think it's me, although I write G there. I think it's me. Well, if it's not me, it's January, but I think it's me. So simplify expressing your answer as a single fraction. M on 3N, everybody get M on 3N? Yeah, that's correct, M on 3N. Go on to the next one. This 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 question here is a binary operator. Um, so square and take it away. So five square. Oh, you get six. Oh, you get six for that one. The answer is six T. Where oh, you get six from? I don't think the answer is 6 for the next part. Well, again, for the next part. So you get M on 3N. Let me just do this quickly for anybody who out there. You find the LCM of this. This is also an algebraic fraction, and I did a video on this maybe about six, seven, eight videos ago. So LCM of that will be 3N, because N could go into 3N, and 3N could go into 3N, obviously, right? And then you say N into 3N is 3, so 3 will multiply by this, so you'll have. 6m take away 5m take away comes from here in the end this is going to be 1m over 3n and you can leave only one you can just put m over 3n so we're getting 23 23 is the correct answer t are holding down that 6 boy <laughs> where i get the calculator well Two videos ago, I do a video on this calculator, and you call the number in that description for information about the calculator. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, a guy who deals in this will link you up with this. Best price in Trinidad. So, if you're in Trinidad, eh? factorize completely. So, this this five stand, I, I want to try and do every quest, do as much questions as possible. And I just leave it out because I know some people may not understand and will stay quiet. Why is all these brilliant people throwing out answers here? Black is white. All right, so five star. This just means five is in the position of A, right? Five star two. And two is in the position of B. So anything they say to do, do. If they say to square, square. So five that square, square that five, <laughs> and take away, take away two. 5 squared take away 2, 25 take away 2 is 23. So, 25 take away 2, 23. What is this? This is a style of factorization that comes all the time. And I see people with the answer here 3 plus x and x minus 2y. Very good. Elish, Eli, Eli. Tell me if I pronounce the name correct. Elisha. 
or il iliasha iliasha and genius kid but i know genius kid hiding down here out here for them when you see four terms here's what you do and i have a video on this it's called what's coming for question two factorization or, or something like that algebra factorization just look at that i go through the four different types of factorization that comes all the time so you can write that down and look out for that video all right so this is what you do when you have four terms you'll have three uh, i'll clear in this So you have 3x minus 6y. I don't want to write that there. We have 3. We're already going on here, but 3x minus 6y plus x squared minus 2xy. And look for what is common. It is like you're watching this equation in two parts. This part. And that part. It's two parts, right? When you see four terms, you're watching the equation in, in two parts. You find what's common in the first part, you'll see that 3 could go into that. There's no letter common, so it'll be like 3 into x minus 2y. Once you see, once you get this, once you get this here, immediately put it back on the next side. Immediately. So it'll be on the next side x minus 2y and then now you just need to try and fill in the blank here that's something going in the blank here something that when i multiply i will get this and when i multiply i'll get this and you can see that that has to be a that has to be a x because x by x is x squared so you need to do plenty of questions on this to get practice um and not only a x a positive x so now it's going to be equal to 3 plus x. Where, how does this happen? This is the little trick. You take this and put that there. You take this and put that there. And then you just take one of the other things in brackets and put it here. x minus 2y. Okay, so that's how you do that one. Go on to the next question. The next question is taking words and putting it into 144 people online. I am amazed. All right. So, <laughs> Diego Sabna, so all these people here and I can't like the video. So wait now, Alia, online and online, didn't like the video. Where are you going on with Alia? Well, let me see this video. I, I can't really see. 22 likes. Alia, sort that out for me, please. 22 likes. I, I don't know what's going on. I can't see it. My height is 73 likes. 145 likes watching organize all yourself all right so let look at the next part a drinking straw of length 21 so that's the entire length of the straw is cut into three pieces so we already, we already seen if the pieces were even it would be seven 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 but maybe they're not even the length of the first piece is x it's not even the second piece is three centimeters shorter than the first piece. The third piece is twice as long as the first piece. Real worded stuff here, man. So let's go let's go on a new page and start to write out write out this 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 madness. <sighs> first piece is X. Oh, let's see what the first question is asking us. Let's read through the question. State in terms of X the length of each of the pieces. <laughs> Write an expression in terms of x to represent the sum of the lengths. So I'm going to do the first part and just write it here. They, they walk in, they walk in into the question. Nice. Sorry if my nose stuff up and thing earlier, but just yet. Um, I'm not doing drugs. Hence, calculate the value of x. State in terms of x the length of each piece. Well, the first piece is just xcm, right? We can put the centimeters out of respect. XCM. The second piece is three centimeters shorter. So what people will do is put three minus x. That's a mistake there. It's three centimeters shorter. So it's, it's the x take away three. 
and you can put that in brackets and put centimeters. And the third piece is twice as long as the first piece. Third piece is twice as long as the first piece. So the third piece is really two times the first piece. So we have all the pieces there. X, X minus 3, and 2X. So if we want to write an expression in terms of X to represent the sum of the length of the three pieces of drinking straw. And remember the total length is 21. You know, you'll see they say write an expression, right? And an expression they really have an equal sign. That's the kind of that's the kind of rule that you learn, right? Expression, no equal sign. So it'd be like Yeah, so I've seen people correct answer. I've seen Jamaica in the house. Uh, so we have Jamaica, we have Guyana, and we have Trinidad. That is it. We have anybody from elsewhere? Jamaica, Guyana, and Trinidad. So Janelle, well done. X plus x minus 3 plus 2x. That's correct. So the expression, no equal sign, is x plus x minus 3 plus 2x. So since it's a right an expression, that's the answer right there. So this represents the sum of the length. So this is the sum. If this is right an equation, it has put equal to 21. Hence calculate the value of x. So um, also for part two, you could simplify this. So I guess that is that's what they're probably looking at too. You could simplify this x plus x is two x. And have a 2x there. So you have x plus x. And you already have a 2x there. So in other words, this is 4x take away 3. You all see that? So this is the expression for the sum in a nice shortened, shortened form. So now to, to evaluate for x, you'll have 4x take away 3 is equal to what by equal to 21. So 4x is equal to 21 minus 3, 18, 4x. So I'm just going here to do the finishing. x is equal to 18, 18 divided by 4. And let me see if we see answers out here. 4.5, 4.5. Why getting x equals 6? I make a mistake? Yeah, I make a mistake. This should be plus. Thank you, people. Well then, I was just checking to make sure they're paying attention. <laughs> so this is 24, 4x. So somebody get the same thing with me there, or I lead somebody down the wrong road. Because somebody, yeah, somebody hit the 4.5 and was like, wait, 6. Right, so Christopher, we went down the same dark road together, boy. So x is equal to 24 over 4, which is 6 centimeters. We are in centimeters. Can't really value of x. Yeah, centimeters. So, pin a little centimeters out of respect, na man. So, all of you put six down, can I them a little centimeters, right? Let me see if anybody say centimeters. Nobody. Nobody. All you're not liking the video, all you're not writing the units. What's going on? What's going on? Next question. Whew. That was four questions. So, this is 2005 May. Calculate the exact value. And as I said, what we do in tonight is consumer arithmetic. This is question one and two in the paper. So this is like two tenths, one fifth, twenty percent of your paper here. Paper two. Where did the twenty one come out from? They said as the total length. That's the total length. Twenty one come out from here. Right, so yeah, why Christopher? Great minds think I like it. I'm an ex-scene, my anger say that scene. Um, so it's supposed to be plus three. Yeah. Well, then, you uh, I'd ask if I pronounce the name correct, and I didn't see a response. Hopefully, we did. You wish, yeah. all right. Um, so what's the answer for the first one for the first part? One E. Six is the answer. What is one two?
All right, Elisha. 13 and 15, that song in familiar. Oh yeah, there's the paper that I do for exams. So many years ago. 2005 me. Somebody get 8 and 15. Samantha. And everybody getting 13 and 15. So... Four and one fifth. Take away open brackets one and one ninth. Multiply by three. I'm getting thirteen and fifteen. Um directly into the calculator. Oh I need to I need to watch here. Do, 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 do. I'm getting that. So make sure you put your brackets and everything like that, otherwise you will run into problems. So hopefully everybody is seeing that. Next part. Now this is a shopping bill. If your question come like this, this year, this is like the easiest consumer arithmetic question. When you get a shopping bill and you just look out some stuff. Had a consumer arithmetic question to look out for would be the wages, would be meter reading with kilowatt hours exchange rate which we did some of that already and compound interest and appreciation and depreciation those are like the tougher sides to consumer arithmetic higher purchase mm, could be tricky too well this this is the sakai so i'll just give me the answers here CDs 1695. Right, I see Nancy's pouring out like rain here. Man. Well done. I must say, I must say, people work in, people come out to work, they're not playing. 160 people online. So for the t shirts, so you have quantity and you have the unit price and then you have the final price. So there's a multiplication thing going on here to equal to that. So 12 by this equals that. So we have. We have, by the way, the answer for this was what? 13 over, 13 over 50. Um, so you just multiply these two. So A, A was, A, 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 A is 37.5. 37 yeah, that I feel in that, 37.5. So we multiplied. To get this one, we had to divide. 2 into that. Mm -hmm. B is 16.95. Yeah, I feel in that too. 16.95. And C is, there's another division going to happen here. C is 5, 5 exact. C is 5, 6.2, yeah. C is 5 exact. Now, this one, this one will have, when you, if you, if you're working separately, don't forget to pay dollars here, but if you're just paying it in the table, like, you will actually write on the paper now. This, back in the days, we started writing a sheet of paper. Um, but you all get any question on the paper, which is a little more easier for you all and a little more easier for when we mark, when, when CXC is marking to scan it out. Um, D now. How are we going to get out D? Everybody... I seen different answers. I seen 16.24 and I seen 16.95. Hmm. A message from the dark side. How are we get into answers today? I'm going only 2.4 you know, because Elisha, Naki, and Christian, Kimberly, Daniel. There's only a couple of with them. Other. Somebody said 216 for D. The VAT can be, imagine you went at, for consumer arithmetic, make sure your answers make sense. Like, if you see a total of $108, and you have 15% VAT, imagine you went and paid $108, and then they tell you VAT is $200, wow, so you're, you're, you're paying the government more money than the actual item. This is not Venezuela, this is 
Trinidad or the Caribbean or Guyana and Barbados and Jamaica. Anybody else? Any other island in the dance? Antigua, Grenada, well done. Alright, so Antigua and Grenada has joined the chat. Antigua, Grenada, Jamaica, Guyana, Barbados, Trinidad. Melissa, you make a mistake. Alright, great. So how are we working it out? This is just a simple percentage. 15, 15% of that. And it would... In this question, like nowadays, they would leave all this. They would leave all this. So you would have had to add up everything. Get this. Then we got 15% of that. And the answer for 15% of that is 16.24. Great. Jamaica, 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 Real Jamaica, St. Kitts. I don't know if you're serious. Turks and Caicos. Bigo. Alright, so let's go on to the next question. <laughs> My next son wake up. All you go down here, I'll scream and I'm thinking. Calculate the values of A, B, and C, and D. We did that. Amanda Soul, say what? Oh, they went on and gave some more little things here, boy. So Amanda sold six of the twelve tickets which she had bought for seventy-five cents each, and the remaining stickers at forty cents each. Okay, so she sold six of them for seventy-five. And then she sold the next six for forty. For forty. So you need to okay, that's just easy. Once I say once again, these questions are not difficult. This one, at least I'm a I'm a math teacher, so I guess I'm not allowed to say whether I feel it difficult or not. But I honestly think this is one of the easier consumer arithmetic consumer arithmetic question. Did I just put a shadow in my blue screen? Whatever. So work it out now. So you're, you're working it out to see whether she made a profit or loss. Some of you all would have the paper in front of you. You could go online and get the paper. It's May 2005. Remember, this is how much she bought these stickers for. 5.88. Uh, the price of one of these stickers was about 50 cents. So now, initially, the first set that she sells, she make a profit, but like people stop buying it, so she had to sell it at a smaller price now. So she making a loss on this half, but she making a profit on this half. They want to know if overall she made a profit or loss. So I'm seeing people saying profit. It's kind of hard because, it's kind of hard to see and understand because, um, you yeah, have the, 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 table on one slide and the question on the next slide. So uh, I'll just work it through. Six. So it was six by 75 cents. Work out what that is. Then another six by 40 cents. And you work out what that is. You add up that. And that would be how much money she get. And you need to see whether, you need to see whether this is more than is it more than um, 5.88? So it's a profit, a profit of one, one or two, one or two profit. Everybody saying one or two profit. Yes, yeah, a profit. All right, let me see. Six times zero point seven five equals four point five. Yeah, four point five and two point four. So this is nine. Oh, 
profit of 102. Yeah, profit of 102. So you take it away and you'll get the profit. Now they didn't really ask you to see how much the profit was, but that's why they usually ask in this kind of question. Let's go on to the next one. 1.2% 1 profit. That's not correct. So if they ask you about percent, you actually need to put the profit over the cost price <coughs> and multiply by 100. And this will give you the percentage profit. So that 1.2% profit dating, Scott, Scott, organize yourself, brother. This is 2005 me. 2005 me. Moving along to 2005 May again, question two. Go ahead. Rush it. Rush, rush that question there, people. This is the three, three styles of factorization here. This is difference of two squares. This is a quadratic. And this is just a, a normal factorizing question. Or is it? This question can be a little fishy. But fact, yeah, you at least have to just do a normal factorizing to begin with. Then this is an expand. And then this is a same old word into algebraic expression. And I feel that one going and come two people. I feel in that. Feeling that word into algebraic expression question. All right, we just made one hour. One hour of consumer arithmetic, arithmetic, and algebra. Let's see if you can hit them our next hour. Then our next hour. Then our next hour. All right, let's see how far we can go. First one is correct. Very good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, go on to the next one. So we look for common terms here. We get A and B. Then you look for what's missing, 5A. Plus B. And then you stop writing. Next one. Right, so difference of three, two squares. Did they say three squares? Yes. Difference of two squares, you get the square root of this and you get the square root of that. Remember, the square root of one is one, eh? So you, you write, this is how you write that question. You have like 9k squared minus one. Most people are custom writing it like this was 9k, you get the square root of that, you write 3k. You get the square root of 1, you write 1. The square root of 9k squared is 3k. Square root of 9 is 3, square root of k squared is k. And then, you're, then you just hit them, you hit them the answer there, 3k minus 1. And 3k plus 1. Now there's a tricky thing that comes in difference of two squares. Let me point it out one time. If you get something like this, what you'll do? A question like this, this comes in difference of two squares. So before you go and do that, do this question here. Everybody. Do this question. This is a difference of two squares. Find the answer for that. Write the answer for that. All right, I've seen people bring the answer for the um, quadratic, but do this, do this question here. Right, so I've seen people saying 2x minus 4 by 2x plus 4. 2x minus 4 by 2x plus 4. I'm starting to see answers. I want to see some more answers. Right, so most people saying 2x. Yeah. Stampy, Brandink, Brandink, Kitty Love, Janika, Akeem. Right, I see my boy Michael with the answer there. Now, right, what, what, what Michael put? Jamelia Loss. Jamelia Clark. So all those who say 2x minus 4 and 2x plus 4, you'd get one of the marks. You wouldn't get the full mark. 
So look out for a question like this where you're seeing a common factor in the dance. You actually need to factorize out the 4 first and it'll get x squared minus 4. 4 by that is x squared and this question comes a lot of times in different ways and 4 by 4 is 16. And now you do the difference of 2 squared with this little part here. So it'll be 4 into x minus 2 by x plus 4. Or, sorry, x plus 2, sorry. Now this part could be in any order. And so that's just something to remember. So all those who say 2x plus 4 by 2x minus 4, then I get 1 of the map because you can actually factorize more. And most of the time they actually write this word next to it as well. Factorize completely. Meaning drags it down that way. Go down to the end. So what you're all doing is just factorizing partially. Alright, so let's go on to the let's let's come back out of that and let's go on to the quadratic. People gave me the answer to the quadratic up, up already. So we'll just do the quadratic the old fashioned way, nice and long. I'll write it in blue. 2y squared minus 5y plus 2. Yeah, you multiply a by c, 2 by 2 is 4. You look for a number. Hmm, which number? It's multiplying by 4. Multiply to give 4, but add to give negative 5. That's going to be negative 1y, negative 4y, because negative 1 and negative 4 is going to do that for me. 2y squared. This is like the four terms now. That's what you're essentially doing now. Making it into four terms, and then yeah, you hit them that. 2y minus 1. Take this and put it back here. 2y minus 1. Look for the missing. The missing link has to be negative 2. So the answer is y minus 2. Um, y minus 2 by 2y minus 1. Yeah, so most people get it. It doesn't matter whether you have it vice versa. That's correct. Alright, let's go on to the last part. This will be, I think, the sixth question that we did. Or do. You did. Last part. Adam, Imran, and Shaquille were playing a card game. Adam scored X points. Imran scored three points fewer than Adam. What going on there? Why this feeling like the same thing from last time? It's like they, they do they repeat that question anyway. Four x minus nine is equal to three y thirty nine. I didn't do b. Oh sorry, I leave out b. Sorry, my bad. Expand and simplify. Well, this is the distributable law. I left out b people. So that's how you're expanding. Each side has got taste at the next side. I'll do it in green here. So 2x by 3x is 6x squared. 2x by negative 4, negative 8x. 5 by 3x, 15x. 5 by negative 4, negative 20. When you expand like this, only the middle terms will the middle terms will come together and have some fun. So this is gonna be 6x squared plus 7x minus 20. Yes, and I'm seeing that answer all over the place. All over the place. Okay, so go on to part C. Part C, 2 into x minus 3, 2 into x minus 3, 2 into x minus 3. Part C, 2, 2 into x minus 3. What's part C, 1? Write down in terms of x and expression for the number of points scored by Shaquille. Hmm. Now we just write it out like last time. Now. So he scored x. He scored 3 points here. Why do they use the same number? What are you going on here? Man? So it's x minus 3. Than Adam, right? I'm just making sure. Imran scored three points fewer than Adam, and Adam was X, so X minus three. 
And Shaquille scored twice as many points as Imran. Imran. So it has some little tricks going on here. So he scored twice as many as Imran. I don't want to put that dash there and make you think it's a negative side. So he scored twice as many as this guy. You understand? So yeah, all those who say that 2 into x minus should be great. Next part. Together they scored 13. Right? And equation. They didn't even ask for the value of x in it. They just write the equation. So you write down all the stuff. X. You add up Adam. Then you add in Imran. Then you add in Shaquille. Minus 3. We put them equal to 39. Technically, once you hit them, that boom. That's supposed to be the answer there. But you want to simplify. Let me, let me be real out here. Simplify this, right? So, this is x, this is x, this is 2 by x. I'm just kind of rushing it a little bit. So that's actually a 4x there. And this is take away 3. But you'll so take away 9 is equal to Okay, I'm actually starting to solve it there. So, I guess once you write this, once you write that, you're good. They will actually begin to solve after. X is 12. People work it out. Yeah. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Let's go on to the next one. You can work it out and solve it just for kicks. Because they could ask it to solve it. Yeah, maybe work it out and solve it. Let's not be lazy. And when you're doing your past papers, do that. Or we try and think about where they could take the question in the future. Or what they could ask you about. So don't just be frigid and rigid on the question and you do that question. Always try and be open-minded and think about... Because you're not going to get back the same question. Why are you doing the question? To get an idea of the line of questioning they will bring. So they may bring it... They may bring some variables and you add it up to be equal to something and maybe I need to find it so let's let's see what happens okay so this is one two three four this is four x's we still have this three there and we'll have two by negative three so that's negative six equal to the nine this is negative nine equal to the nine yeah so people are right this turns into 48 because when the when this comes across add 9 48 or x x should be 48 divided by 4 which is equal to 12 so everybody who has already 12 well done i add the 9 and subtract what i did add the 9 Answer me. Can you write answer me? I add the 9. That's a plot. Or maybe I said that earlier. I don't know. Negative 3. Negative 6. Negative 9. Whatever. But that's the answer. Alright. So let go on. Oh, that's for you. Okay. Question 1. Question one. So y'all go ahead and do the question. I'm just doing a little quick um, fix up here. One fifty one. So you're doing this question here using a calculator, otherwise you find you're writing the value exactly. People do have a calculator. So 15.208 looks like the exact answer.
right? And then the what else? Correct the two significant figures. The two significant figures. Somebody say we close enough twelve, I think. I, I, I don't know how it goes. I don't know how it will go. I'm just trying to get my live dashboard here. So it looks like everyone figured out this. The egg, the exact was. No, we are, I seen some people already wrong some wrong answers to it. So the exact was. 151.208 when you put in your calculator you got that so correct the two significant figures not two decimal places two significant figures so you're looking at this figure this figure since this is less than five he goes to zero all the rest goes to zero so this will be one five zero right and when you write your answer you write two two significant Figures. Spell all the significant figures. I just put SF. Right? Right. Next part. The table below gives information on the values and the rates of depreciation in value of two motor vehicles. Ah, depreciation question. Nice, go ahead. Rush that question, Nick. Yeah, so everybody was saying 2.1. Everybody was saying 2.1. Are they talking about decimal places? The question asks in most significant figures. Significant figures, you start from the most valuable figure. The 1 here represents 100, so that's the most significant figure coming from this side. So go ahead and look at these depreciation values there. I've seen answers already. Some people not playing. Hmm. If I press this button, what will happen? I press the button here. Uh, <laughs> I think some people will just an uh, ad will just pop out at you. Gotta pay those bills, man. <laughs> All right. So the table below below gives information on the values and rates of depreciation in the value of two motor vehicles. So I depreciate. This is the initial value for the taxi. And it's going down by 12% every year. Wow, that drastic way. Imagine you buy a car for $40,000 and 12% of the value of that cut off the next year. Chano. So this is the value after one year. You need to get 12% of $40,000 and take it away. Or with these percentage things, there's a kind of shortcut, right? So like if you want to go straight today, you could just take away the 12% one time from the 100. So this is really 88%. And that would just give you your answer there. If you understand what I do there, 100 take away 12 is 88. So 88 over 100, you multiply, and you will get the answer there. And what answer you'll get? 35, 35200. So P is 35200. Next one. So you, you need to see, you need to see what, what happened here. You need to find out how much, how much, was lost now. You need to do a little takeaway. A little takeaway, find out how much was lost, and then work it out as a percentage. So basically, the concept is that we want this takeaway that and put in that. Sorry, there's extra zero here. I can't write this bad. Let me write it a little bit. Only 25,000. Take away the 21,250. And we want that. We want it as a percentage of the initial one. The initial price. Initial value. 
So you record that and you can multiply by 100 to get the percentage. Right? And what percentage you'll get? 15? Everybody gain 15%. I can live with that. The value of the taxi after two years. So if you want the value of the taxi, taxi after two years, what are you going to do? Somebody say, I'm very well lost, but still here watching. I admire that. It takes strength to be lost and still here in the dance. But, um, yeah, hopefully as you're going along, more things will start to pop out at you, you know. And you remember, the video will, the video will be here. YouTube will take a little while because it's so long. It's like about two hours and, or more. We'll be going for three hours, four hours, how, how much ever. Um... The video will take so long, but after a while, they'll, they'll post it back up. Anyhow, after two years. After the value of the taxi after two years, what would answer? What answer you'll get there? Value after two years is 30976. Yeah. That's something good. So what you have to do here is just work out that next and next eighty-eight percent of that. You can work out the twelve percent and take away. You understand? Work out the how much money has depreciated and take it away, or you can just work out eighty-eight percent of this, which is like zero point eight eight. And next we are thinking about it. So zero point eight eight of that. And when you say of, you mean multiply. Yeah, 13, some people saying 6 and some people saying 3, my calculator saying 6, Joanna, so 3, 5, sorry, 3, 0, 9, 7, 6. This topic is, appreci this topic is depreciation, <coughs> which is like the reverse of compound interest. So, and the general topic is consumer arithmetic and what we do tonight is arithmetic consumer arithmetic and algebra we already looked at the syllabus to see what would be tested so now we're just doing questions questions and just vibes in it tomorrow we'll be doing construction matrices and vectors right so i'm going to press this button here this we're going, we're going on to the next question but before i do it i'm going to press this button here to pay some bills it's a play add button a little lemon if you see an ad jump out, right? Because you see. So if I see an ad, just let me know. If I have biology class and thing and whatever it is tomorrow, I like to roll out there. But as long as there are people here, we're going down. All the people who grind in, we're going down. And I still have 15% battery on this phone to monitor the chat. So. No ad, no ad, no ad, no, 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 not seen any ads. Well, whoever, whoever see the ad will, whoever see. No ad, no ad, no ad, no ad. Okay. What are we going on? Next question. Why am I seeing this question? Oh, this. This is this question. This is a straight up exchange rate question. Go ahead and rush this question earlier. Rush it. Yeah, it's 9 p.m. Trinidad time, 8 p.m. Jamaica time. When I'm coming back home tomorrow. When is the science subject? I'm not doing any live for science subjects. Inequalities in admats, please. Quadratic inequalities. Quadratic inequalities, yeah, maybe. Um, okay, any answers for this question? Six hundred years. Oh my gosh, what Guyanese doing with the dollars, boy? So one dollar Guyanese is zero point zero one US. I don't be walking with a big pile of cash. Or oh, they must have thousand dollar and hundred thousand dollar bills. Anyhow, calculate the value of sixty thousand in, in in US. Well, yeah, right. this is just a straight straight up multiplication because if you have one dollar 
equal 0.01 US dollar. This is the US. We're just squeezing USD. And this one is the guy. The guy dollars. If if I have 60,000 now, 60,000, I'm going to have to multiply this one by 60,000. And I'm going to get what everybody's getting there, 600 US. Aha, uh -huh, Crystal Bash, Crystal Bash, get at. So, one or two people do get ads. Okay, okay. Use nine. Okay, next part of the question. So, everybody gets 600. Let's look at the next part of the question. Calculate the value of US. Okay, other way around. And they like to do that in this. They ask it one way, then they ask it the other way. And just do the same thing, but just turn around the exchange rate the other way. So, you had 0 0.37 US equal to 1 EC. So, US EC. So, therefore, if you want to work out for how many US? 925. I skip any. You can find for 1, and then it'll be 1 over 0 0.37, right? Or you could have just gone straight to the next line here, which would be what, 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 925 would be equal to 1 over 0 0.37. And I know this question gives students a lot of trouble to just grasp what we multiply and what we divide in. The trick is to find for 1. Right? You need to know whether you're working from this side of the exchange, the conversion, the exchange rate, or this side. We're working from the US side now because we're going to find how much US in EC, right? And that answer there. Once and again, 25, 2500. Let me see if I get the same thing. Yeah, 2500 EC. And just like that, we rack up our next part of our question. Our next question there. Okay. Do this one. We have difference of two squares here. We have a normal factorization. We have a linear. We have an algebraic fraction. Whoa! What is that? <laughs> we have some factorization and factorize a quadratic in the denominator. That's a little scary. Then, ignore this part. We'll see that coming out in the next slide. Yes. Hey, why do they wait? Right. So, go ahead. Let's start to get some answers for the first one. When am I doing trigs? I suspect I will get to no trigs. I'll get to the I already did a whole set of basic trigs recently. But the advanced tricks like bearings and sine and cosine, that will probably be on the last day of the these lives that I'm doing, which may be Saturday. Tomorrow I'm doing construction, algebra, construction, sorry, I'm doing algebra today. Construction, matrices and vectors. That's what I'm doing tomorrow. So that's the last question and the third question. I may also do some basic tricks as well tomorrow. Answers, answers, answers. 2x minus 9 over 15. 2x minus 9 over 15. Anybody get that for the first one too? 2x minus 7 over 3. My gosh. 2x minus 12 over 15. 2x minus 21. I need to get it together, people. Everybody come, come up with the same answer. Food. 2x minus 9 over 15. 2x minus 21 over 15. Why are we getting 9 and 21 and 3? Negative 21 over 15. So no x. The x gone. All right. We definitely had to do this question. This question causing magic. Um, x minus 3 over 3. x minus 3 over 3. 
also take away x minus 2 over 5. Take away x minus 2 over 5. Alright. So, we find the LCM. Multiply by 5 here. Take away by 3 x minus 2. Because we would be like 3 into 15 is 5, and 5 into 15 is 3. So you multiply by the numerator of each of them. I feel like the 9 is the correct answer because we've been starting to swing, swing into that one. And 5x minus 15. Take away 3x plus 6 over 15. Bring those x's together. Why have this line down here over? Bring those x's together, son. 2x. And I'm getting 9 here. And I'm getting 15. So this one is the correct one. Ting, 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 ting. 10 points for Griffin now. Let's go back. Factorize this. Factorize this. This one is easy. It will be x into x minus 5. So that one is just a normal factorizing. This is like half of a quadratic. There's no plus 2 or anything there. So you just, you just look for what's common and factorize. This one is seen as square there and you could see a square there. So you can find the square root. So we have x plus 3 and x minus 3. Yeah, so some people are still on this. So the 5x came together with the negative 3x to make this. And the negative 15 and the plus 6 came together to make the 9. Now this is the one I want people to dance with. Do this, do this question. It's 9, not 3. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, 9. My bad. We sabre. We don't need me. Yeah, so it's nine, not three. No, I made a mistake. There's no fancy work in there. It's supposed to be a nine. It's supposed to be a nine. Alright. So simplify this. This is the one I want people to get to. A squared plus four E over a squared plus 3a minus 4. a over a minus 1. That's something like the correct answer. Well done, well done, well done. Michael, Jenica. One over negative 3. Oh, that's suspicious. Alright, so let's do the working for this one. a squared plus 4a. Let's, let's, let's go in green this time. A squared plus 4A over A squared plus 3A minus 4. A squared plus 3A minus 4. So you can separate it if you want and work out, the, work out your um, numerator and denominator separately. Uh, I will not separate it. I would put A into A plus 4, then do this quadratic, well, because this quadratic has no a value, you're supposed to be able to do that in your head and just go straight to the next line. But for for length, for, for everyone to be really inclusive, I'll, I'll take my time with it. So there's one negative 4, two numbers, a negative 4, but add to give you a positive 3, so you're looking at a positive 4 and a negative 1, right? So we'll have a squared plus 4a minus 1a. Take away 4. So 
I didn't sleep last night because I went to sleep around three or four, fix it, trying to fix this laptop. And then I had a whole set of stuff to do today. So I know that the feeling lack of sleep. But we go in still. Alright, and then A A plus four. And because this is this is so much fun. And you all having fun. And you have A into A plus four. Negative one into A plus four. And the whole trick about this is that one of the factors are gonna cancel cancel off from the top and the underneath. So you have a minus one. So most people should be able to come straight to this. So you go straight from there to this, right? And as I said, the trick in this is that this and this cancels. So you get what everybody's getting here. A e and a e minus one. Good job. Next question. So the crying, as I said, if you ain't crying and screams in the background, that's my my children. But my wife is there, so they safe. Next part. Go ahead with this question now. I'm missing part of the question. Hmm. Jeez and ages, boy. So this question in two parts, people. And if I could do a little thing, give me here quick, boy. So I snap that. Do this. Cut that. Done. Save. Go back here. Put in this picture from my photo library. I didn't see no more photo library, though. Right. So this is the top part of the question here. Yeah, the first part of the question, I get crap out. So uh, there now. So go ahead with the question. Well, people don't have it done already too. Uh, some people maybe have the past papers in front of them. So Patrice done giving me some answers there, which is correct. Yeah, look at that parallel separation between them two equations there, Patrice. Looking like one big equation. All right, so yeah, so we have those those two equations. We're trying to get the two equations. I want to see more people put the answer. Given that one cassette is X and one CD was Y, but you have two cassettes, three CDs giving you that, four cassettes, one CD giving you that. So yeah, you're getting... You're going to get that. 2x plus 3y is equal to 175. And 4x plus 1y, or you could just put y, is equal to 125. So now you solve this. You solve this simultaneous equation. And this calculator can solve it just so. So I'll solve it on the calculator. Why is it all solve it in reading? Two, three, one, seven, five. So I'm trying to get. I have a camera in the ceiling right there. I'm trying to get a proper cord so I can be able to hook it up here, so I'll be able to stream that that as well, so that when I'm doing the little calculator work, you all will be able to see it. But for now, use your imagine, use your imagination, man. One, one, two, five. Again, X is 20. And Y is 45. Y is 45, yep. And X is 20. Some of you are writing the answer and, and Google hiding it. So... I had to keep um, putting the shoe. So, like, you're, if you just write a whole set of numbers, they think it's spam, so they will hide it. Don't worry. 
Now me. Let's Google. So X is 20 and Y is 45. So you could solve this, you could solve this via the elimination method or the substitution method. When it's written like this, it's easier to use the elimination method. Where I would have multiplied this by 2, this equation by 2, and this equation would have turned into 4x plus 6y equal ugh, um, 350, I think. Yeah. And that's equation 1 and equation 2. Um, this is really equation 3. This is really equation 2 and 3. Because this would have been equation 1 here. So, and you have to say equation 1. You have to write 2 here. Equation 1 multiplied by 2. Now, I have a full tutorial on simultaneous equation, right? So, uh, um, I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to explain every single, single, single thing. I have a full tutorial on simultaneous equations. And most people already get the answer and just waiting for me to go on. So, once you have these two, you can take away because the signs are the same. The sign is the same here and here. So, you just take away. You take away equation 2, take away equation 3. Um, actually, I will take it away the other way around so that I'll end up with 5y here and I'll end up with 125. Take away 350. So, remember, two, I mean, 350 take away 125, 225. And then y would be equal to 225 divided by 5, which I presume is 45. And once you find for y, you substitute into any one of the equations and you'll get x. Well done. x is 20, y is 45. So it's like this here. It'll be like 2x plus 3 by, um, why use that one? The second one would have been nicer. So it'd be like 4x plus uh, 45 is equal to 125. So then 4x is equal to 125. Take away 45. So you're already seeing now that 4x would be equal to 80 x will be equal to 18 over 4, which is equal to 20. Next question. May 2008. What's the time? What's the time? 10.54. My battery on 12%. But there's a charge. Uh, <laughs> all right. So using a calculator, or otherwise determine the exact value expressed as a single fraction. Oh, boy. And next exchange rate again. Let me see. We are real questions about people. This question here is a higher purchase. We, are, we have in questions, we have in questions. So let me go back. All right, so just do these quickly. This will be practice. We'll run through this question a little faster than the speed we were going at previously since this, this looks like a repeat of everything. So let me just run through the question very quickly. So 3.29 times that plus the square root of that, they want it in exact, the exact value. So we gain them back the exact value. Notice how I watch and make sure what they want. Eh? Start off with the brackets 3.9 times 0 0.27. So y'all could erase against me here. I'm I would be delayed. So the answer is 1.873, so you can actually write that, 1.873. Or you can have leave the fraction, which is, which is a big nasty fraction, 1873 over 1000. Yeah, that's the simplest. Express this as a single fraction, next one. 2. And a half take away four fifths divided by three quarter. So your answer is thirty four and fifteen. Next one. 
in this question, one they give you the exchange rate already. They not they didn't ask you to do no CBDB to find out the exchange rate, so they just give you it straight up. I'm gonna press this play add button again. Have some fun with that. So use use one right. So we have the exchange rate and can an application in Canada still use this credit card to buy a camera for that. Hey, I remember doing this question. What's the value of the camera in Jamaican dollars? By the way, think of these kind of questions logically first. So if you paid this amount Canadian, pay it and get Jamaican exchange rate a little it's a little rough. It's a little rough out in Jamaica where the exchange rate. Um you know that the amount for that camera will be a little more. So you're thinking like that. So Canadian two fifty, so it'd be like one is equal to seven to two fifty. So therefore it'll be like um two fifty now, two fifty Canadian. And I'm supposed to be writing Canadian here and this is the Jamaican. Um would be equal to straight up a straight multiplication. Then I know division here because it comes like if you're dividing by one. So it's just a straight multiplication by two fifty. And that should give me everybody again, everybody saying eighteen. One two five, and this represents Jamaican dollars. And let's go on. Steve's credit card limit is thirty thousand Jamaican. After buying the car, um, the camera, how much Canadian dollars does he have left? And this is, I've seen questions similar to this come two or three times with like a credit card and a limit, and they make it do a little take away in the other currency and then come backwards just to be a little creative. But remember, they do have as much marks to play with as they had back in the days. Because this question is out of 10 marks. The first question is going to be out of 9 marks now. Alright, so you just take it away. So, what's left? It's going to be 30,000. 30k, take away that um, 18. One, and by 30k, I just mean 30,000, right? But everybody should know that because Instagram and them kind of thing. Take away one eight one two five, so you get one 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 eight seven five Jamaican left one one eight seven five right. I'm gonna calculate that enough, but I hope I, that was the correct thing. And now you want to change this to Canadian dollars, so it'd be like seven seventy two point five zero ja. Is equal to one Canadian, then one one eight seven five of the Jadalas. Uh, why writing it behind by so always do this seventy two point five multiply by one one eight seven five. So essentially, you're just doing one one eight seven five divided by seventy two by zero. And everybody saying one six three point seven nine. They are asked any, they ask any specifications. They don't really ask anything specific. So all that while you're saying me, tell me there. Who one six three point seven nine? That is it. You pay your dollars and your cents and you walk away. When you have a dollars and cents question, you just put up to the dollars and cents. Next question. Find the value of each of the following when A is 2, B is. So some substitution. Here we have our next nasty looking question. Um, what's going to happen with this question? I have no idea. So we'll call this question and see if anything fishy happened. Um, oh no, that's substitution here and substitution there. So that's simple. My bad. I thought I was a factorizing. And then change the following statement into algebraic expression. Solve, solve this equation, and then factorize completely. So, I am going to rush these questions, and I'm going to run it through quickly. A is 2, B is negative 1, and C is 3. 2, negative 1, and 3. Put this in brackets, because you know that we like when you put in negative numbers, we like to do that. This turns out to be 2 by 2, so this is... 4. Next one. Everybody getting 4? 
Hey, just answers here. You know. I like this. I like what I see going on in this chat. 4b squared. So this is 4, and b, remember, b is negative 1. Negative 1 to b squared. Take away 2ac. 2 by 2 by 3 over a plus b plus c. So that is 2 plus negative 1 plus 3. 2 plus negative 1 plus 3. So that's straight up. You can do this in your mind, man. 4. So this is 4. Take away 12 over 4. So you get negative 8 over 4. Answers again, my negative 2. Well done. 4 times the sum of x plus 5. Put, this, put in this into into an algebraic expression, so no equal sign. So this is 4 times the sum of x plus 5. x plus 5, 4 times the sum of that. 16 larger than the product of a and b. So when you're, when you're doing these questions, it's like you're watching the ending first, and then you're watching what they're doing to it coming along. So you're the product of a and b, so it's like a and b, meaning a multiplied by b. I can put a multiply sign there, I can just put them next to each other, which means multiply. And 16 larger. Now, a lot of people will put 16 times. It's not 16 times. 16 larger means add it all. So 16 larger to the product of A and B. It doesn't matter if you have 16 plus AB or AB plus 16. You get the same thing. That's the same thing. Correct. Great. Let's go on. So we're solving this equation here now. So you have 15 minus 4x is equal to... 2 into 3x plus 1. This is 15 minus 4x is equal to 6x plus 2. This is the distributive law, where this multiplied and this multiplied. So this leaves us with, let's bring all the x's. Hi, Hi. I'm live right now, bro. Bye-bye. We're going to sleep. So this leaves us with negative 10x. I skip a line, people. My son came and distracted me, so let me just skip that line there now. Negative 13. Because I brought across the 6. Right, so this is going to be x is 1.3, which is correct. Um, yeah. So 13 over 10, so we get 1.3. Let's see if you come on from in one part. In part one, part two. One part. Two. What are we talking about? I don't know what you're talking about, Tiffany. I don't know what you're talking about. Fish, I say 1.3 is wrong here, 7.89. I like 1.3, I feel in that. I good with that. 1.3 song in. 1.3 song in good. Oh, by the way, if the audio or anything drop in, just let me know, because yeah? I talk in this direction and I'm talking towards the speaker here. So, um, 129 people. That's okay, that's a reasonable number. 129 people still online. Some of the, some of the people who couldn't handle the, the night drop off. It's supposed to stay on straight truth. Um, so let's get down to these factorizing questions. Writing questions all over this page. <laughs> Six is so this is a real wild, wild up factorizing question. So anytime you see all them kind of high powers and thing, no, you're not doing anything spectacular. You're just looking for what's common and, and you're, you're rocking back. Sometimes something might pop out when you reach into the next line, but other than that, you're not doing anything spectacular. So what's common? What's common? I'm going to do this in a different color. So what's common? We've seen 6. We've seen a squared and a b. 6 a squared and a b. 6 a squared and a b into um, b squared plus 2 a. Yeah. 
Alright, next one. This is a quadratic. Let's see if I can squeeze them in and I need there with all these steps. So 2 by negative 5 is 10. Negative 10, sorry. 2 by negative 5 is negative 10. Uh, we're looking for answers that's positive. So we're looking at what? 10, 10 and negative 1 and 10 and negative 1. So 10 and negative 1 m. Oh, I get 2 m squared. Go back in, take away 5. You'll have 2 m into m plus 5. m plus 5 goes back here. And a negative 1 goes there. So the answer for this, the answer for this is 2m. Bring it 2m and this together. So 2m take away 1. And what we had, m plus 5 is the next one. Alright. So that's it. 2m take away 1, m plus 5. One point eight seven three. One point eight eight. One point eight seven three. One point eight seven three. What are one point eight seven three about? That's the X. Let me double check this X thing because people sat to correlate each other in the chat here about this. Okay, maybe I could be wrong. Okay, fifty minus four X two six X. Yeah, two bring across that negative ten x negative fifteen. Um nah, that correct. Thirteen over ten. Which is one point three. So what do one point eight eight four is for? People eyes going down, yes? Next question. Can't read the exact value of that. Exact value. Let's throw that in the calculator and move forward. Well, um, shift. Well, yeah, stop correlating both two distinction. You know, CX, you say that nothing like distinction. So, when, but I know you know what you mean when you say distinction. You mean you have um, all A's in the profile. So. I don't really fight up that talk to. So we train in this question in the calculator. Anybody get through? Good night, Janelle. Now, if you have to sleep because you're awake in the morning, go and sleep. Go, go study. Um, go play superstar here and then be sleepy in the week. But then again, if you want to grind, grind. But the video will still be here tomorrow if you to watch on the next part. So when you put this in your calculator, everybody get 11 and, 11 and 14. Veronica, you're still with me. Well done. So, 11 and 14. This is definitely a question where you want to write out everything. You write numerator. You write what happens. Then you write denominator. You write what happens, and then you write numerator divided by denominator, and you flip the denominator. Yeah, man, the general. Well done, Danny. Well done, genius. Oh, you always have a maths exam tomorrow. I feel like every time you message in a chat, you have a maths exam the, the next day. Hey, sir. All right. So, 11 and 14. What about this one? This year, what year is this? This is January 2008. Next question. Next question. Two fifths on the next one. Really? That's nice. 2 minus, that's convenient, 0 0.24 over 0 0.15. Two fifths. Correct. Next part. Um, I'm kind of high up, so now you look at it here. 
the cash price of a bicycle is 319.95 it can be bought on so this is a higher purchase question so something new in the consumer arithmetic dance by making a deposit of $69.10 monthly installments of $28.50 each so that's how higher purchases work sometimes you can make a little down payment and then add on the monthly payments or sometimes it's just monthly installments right through hmm so there were the total higher purchase price of the bicycle now higher purchases usually be more than the cash price right so you're looking at the answer a little more than that maybe about a hundred more or something so let me do it so the higher purchase price is going to be the deposit plus installments everybody getting 354 I like the people that just work in quick way. Work in and answers. Work in and answers. So 69 plus 10 by that. 10 by 28.50. So. Uh, 69 plus 354. And I'm much higher than the bike. So that, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. What do you think? 285. So they get 354. Three fifty four. Next part of the question. So that's the total higher purchase price. Three fifty four dollars. Calculate the difference between the total higher purchase price and the cash price. Oh my gosh, they actually actually asked it to calculate that. So they were to take away people. So we take away when they get to the 4.04. So 24.04. That's a that's that's a free mark there. And express your answer in two above as a percentage of the cash price. So just put this over the cash price and multiply by hundred. What percentage you get? Of the cash price, eh? as a percentage of the cash price, thirty-four point zero five. Over the cash price, three one nine point nine five. Multiply by hundred. How much percentage you all getting? Twelve. The general. Are you coming here to, to get numbers by thirty-four? 0.05 divided by 3, 1, 9.95 multiplied by 100. 10.6%. 10.6%. Express your answer in part 2. I just don't like how they give that kind of percent, that kind of way. So that would make me double check my answer just to make sure. Cut the difference between total higher purchase price that yeah. Everything look correct. So yeah, 10.64, whatever, 10.64 percent. Now for a question like this is normally 10.6 percent. Three significant figures. As they deal with a percentage, one decimal please. That good. 10.6 percent would have been nice as well. Next question. Solve this inequality. Remember what I said about inequalities last time? Jamel Jamel Nancy is a, is a Zessa. So the 3 minus 2x Three minus 2x is less than 7 Answers, answers, answers. Give me some answers there. 118 people still online. We could work with that. The time is 11.16. We pump in. 3 minus 2x is less than 7. Keep again, 0. Zero. What is the meaning of that 0? X more than... Or equal to negative one, Janika. 
Ah, you retract your message. That's a good idea because the sign can change from a. It had no equal to any sign, so you can just pop out. And seeing people saying x is greater than negative two, x is greater than negative two. Somebody say five, which is not correct. X is greater than negative two. It's starting to show up more. X is greater than negative two, so that's that's three minus two x is less than seven. Let's just look in a different color. A color we feel in my purple. Three minus two x is less than seven. Negative two x is less than seven. Take away three. Now remember, this three is positive. Although there's a negative sign behind the three. This negative sign belongs to that 2x. So when it comes across, it is negative, now the 3. And so this becomes less than 4. This is a negative 2x. So this x is... Now there's a little problem here. There's a little problem here. Can't write that. Why I can't write that? Because I'm looking to bring across a negative number that's multiplying. I'm going to divide everybody by a negative number. So all of a sudden, boom, this changes into... Next direction, and it will be 4 over negative 2, so x is greater than negative 2. Next question, if x is a whole number, determine the smallest value that's has. A, this comes, this comes once in a while. So after you solve the inequality, after you solve a question in inequality, they will ask you to show your answer on a number line. So I'll show you how to show this on a number line, or they could ask you some kind of weird question like this. What is the, 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 the biggest whole number or the smallest whole number or the biggest integer that will solve it so a whole number do you remember the on um, the syllabus what we said a whole number was we saw it on the syllabus let me see if i can just pull this up very quickly very quickly now very quickly now the whole number is it showing up? Is that syllabus showing up? Boom! Right there, you can see that. Right there. Whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3. So the whole number starts at 0 and then goes on. Right? So if they're asking, well, if x is a whole number, determine the smallest value that satisfies, uh, it has to be 0. So all those who say in the 0, well done. Has to be 0 x is equal to zero that's the smallest value that satisfies because if it's a whole number it starts on zero and it's going up and this inequality is saying that x must be greater than negative two so negative two is out negative one is out zero is the first one that's in so the answer is zero hopefully i explain that good enough there all right start to factorize we starting to see things repeat already, yeah? Look at that. We do what? Oh, seven or eight questions somewhere around there. And we starting to see so much things repeating. And that's how it is. All right. So you have a normal factorizing here. Uh, yellow, yellow never get a chance to shine. And the yellow will never get a chance to shine because it just don't show up. All right, yellow, you, you feel the orange. Orange, orange it's your time now. It's your time now. So x into x minus y is the answer for this one. Then then we have a complete any square question. Straight up a plus one, a minus one. Then now, I don't really mind people um, having fun and thing in the chat. You can say all you want in the chat. Just don't be rude to others and disrespect others. Otherwise, I've got to pay and a time out. Or just book you from the chat. And I don't really want to do that because I'm a free fall kind of person. All right, so 2p minus 2q minus p squared plus pq. This is the 4. This is the 4. 4 stuff. 4 terms. Factorizing, so we just look for what's common, and we see a nice two here, and we see p minus q. Put back this p minus q here. 
and it means we have to we have to put a negative p here to get this to be negative and to get this to go back positive. So your answer is going to be your answer is going to be two minus p and p minus q. Two minus p, p minus q. My battery and seven percent is like the battery counting and counting and counting. But my wife just come and show me the charger there, so we can just be pumping long, long, long. All right, it's 111 people. If that number reaches 100, maybe, maybe you might, you might shut down. Me. Who is my baba? That feed fresh, my baba. Normally, my hair is being a mess. So like, if you watch my videos, they see my hair all in a mess. But my baba is a real boss. It's just I don't see him regular. When he when he see me, he be like, <laughs> well, my baba is is a suka singer. Somebody called Snakey. I don't know if you hear this song. If you do t short, yeah, Snakey sing that song. That's my baba. So I know somebody in that chat must know Snakey. All right. Next, January two thousand and eight. Continuing in January 2008, and we're continuing here with um, the algebra question. Rush it, rush it, rush it. Keep it in the box. I've seen somebody quarreling there, but I never really time out anybody in a time out one person who says some kind of thing disrespecting somebody else. I mean, so somebody calling at me for timing them out, but I didn't even time them out. YouTube must be time you out. All right. This person here. I love your comment to show. Your comment was being hidden by YouTube, so I love your comment to show so people can see what you're saying. I wasn't timing you out, bro. All right, so let me go. We're going. The table below shows the types of cakes available at a bakery. The cost of each cake and the number of and he the table below shows the type of cakes available at a break. The cost of each cake and the number of cakes sold for a given day. Write an expression in terms of k for the amount of money collected from the sale of sponge cakes for the day. Sponge cakes. For the day. All right, yeah. Answers. Two by k plus five. Great. So this is the cost, and this is the number. So an expression for the amount of money collected will be two times the cost, right? Will be two times k plus five. I feel like I didn't see this question, and I mean. I, I teach a lot of math, so I do this question. I do questions all the, all the, all the time. So I feel like this question was like a rare question. All right. Um, write an expression in terms of k for the total amount of money collected. So you yeah, hit them, everybody. Hit them, everybody. 2 by k plus 5 plus 10k. You understand what we're doing here? We multiply plus 4 by 2k, so I just put 8k one time. And that adds up to give me how many k is there? You could see 2 by k. And remember, this kind of came already. Yeah? This is this concept repeated already, even in what we do. 2k, 10k, 8k, that's 20k plus 10. 20k plus 10, I'm seeing that, I'm seeing that. Well done, well done. 20k. Plus 10. The total amount of money collected at the BP for the day was 140. So 20k plus 10 is equal to that. So you just put 20k plus 10 is equal to the total amount here, 140. So 20k would be equal to 140. Take away 10, which is 130. 20k is that. So k would be equal to. We all get k to be equal to the 6.5. Yeah. Now, what kind of number is k? k has to be in dollars. So I'll put next zero there and I'll put dollar. Because k, k, is, k is money here. 
So keys, keys and KD unit for keys dollars. So you put 6.50 and you put the dollar sign. Just to make it look nice. I don't know if they take away marks for that, but that's what we are accustomed to. Ah, more questions. Oh, I don't have any more questions. So, I'm taking requests now. I have a past paper booklet here. I have my past paper booklet. Any question from question one and two that you will feel we need to do, call it and we'll find it and we'll do it. In the meanwhile, I'm just looking for some other consumer arithmetic questions that we didn't yet attempt. Um, I would really love to do a question on bills and windows. Wow, the number going back up is 121 now. Some people come in for the midnight shift. Wages, simultaneous equation, factorizing. We do a lot of factorizing already. Wages, wages, twenty eighteen wages. Okay, let's do the 2018 wages. First, I need to go find that question. So we're going to go through the 2018 wages question. So everybody, we're going to do the 2018 and then we're going to do the 2019. 2018 and 2019. 2018 and 2019. Once again, we'll be ripping speed and then I'll explain any little tough spots. So, start to head online and look for the 2018 2019. Battery and 5%. Uh, I'll stick in the paper too right now. For this crash course, I'm sticking the paper too. There's a. Uh, there's a. D-U-B, write down this, D-U-B-E, maths, do, do maths or something like that, they do, they do, um, they do multiple choice, D-U-B-E maths on YouTube, that site does multiple choice, but I kind of stay away from any multiple choice, because my site has ads on it now, so I don't want to run into any copyright infringement, get yeah, people next kind of thing. So 2018, using a calculator, otherwise one picture. Jenny's, this is the one where the wages. Two. And three. <laughs> just give me a little one second to just and there was nothing interested in question two, 2018 maybe except this part so I'll take this part I'll take this part as well two and three people online yeah man people waiting on me so great they have patience Alright, so let's have to put that in into this program here. This question. So we're doing this. Denny work, works at Sami's restaurant and is paid according to the rates in the following table. In a week when Jenny serves N customers, her weekly wage is that determines Jenny, Jenny's weekly wage if she serves 200 and 30. I see people are rolling out good night, good night, good night. And I see even people coming in good night. So good night to those who are rolling out, good night to those who are coming in. 
somebody say I murdered this. <laughs> yeah, this was this this was a scene. Now the the thing with this it, it, it involves some algebra inside a consumer arithmetic question, which is a little questionable, but it was some it was vibes, it was vibes. So determine Jenny's weekly wage if she served 230 com customers. Well, what we're going on here is this WG. This WG is her weekly is her weekly wage. This N here stands for number of customers sold. In this case, they want that to be 230. So it's like a straight up substitution in today would give her weekly wage. So. Everybody getting 807 people don't start to rush the question, boy. So this is going to be 600 plus people getting 807, 807, 0.9 by 230. Yeah, that's sounding good. I'll go into that, that 807 feeling good. 807. The live started at 9. And it will start at 9 tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing construction and vectors and matrices. Next part of the question. <clears throat> I did it. At the same restaurant. Wait, it didn't pop up as yet for you. At the same restaurant, Shauna is paid a weekly wage of this plus this for each customer sale. So you need to generate the equation. Write the formula for calculating Shauna's weekly wage when she saves M. Note, they already tell you what to use M instead of N. So go ahead and write the answer for this. I'll just give you a little glimpse back. Although I think I allowed scrolling back in the live, so you could always scroll back and just tap back a little bit and you'll be able to see this. Um, so you'll be able to compare this side. Remember, this was the equation for Jenny, and now we're looking at the equation for Shona. We need to write the formula for Shona. So people are already doing it, but you can't put WG this time, you have to put WS because they talk about Shona, right? Um, I'm speaking to Darian here. Since you talk more Shona, don't put WG, put WS. So you put WS is equal to, and you're starting off with a base wage. A base wage is 270. So that will never change. She'll always get 270. If she served nobody, she come to work and she just, well, she get fired. <laughs> but if she come to work and didn't serve nobody and in a perfect will and she didn't get fired, she would have just made 270. But then, she's starting to get a little commission here now. 100 and 1.5, well, 150, 1.5, same thing, by M. The amount of customers sold. Yeah, man. Blessings. Next part of the question. And that is this part here. In a certain week. This was the part that just threw people up. In a certain week, Jenny and Sean I received the same wage from the same, this way the same, I kind of cut it out, from the same number of customers. How many customers did they each serve? How are we finding that? Yeah, man, Scott, I, I, I respect the dedication. Yes, so they get the same weight, so it means WG must be equal to WS. That is a good place to start. Yeah, you can solve it like a simultaneous equation. Mm, yeah, but it's it's more it's more linear. It's more just a straight up one linear equation because in this case, M must also be equal to N. Because they say they serve the same number of customers as well. So you're going to let M be equal to N. And people are already seeing the answer. So let me just go ahead and look it out. If you remember, WS was actually 270 plus 
1.5 m but since m and n is equal i just use n straight through and this one is 600 plus 0 0.9 n so you have 600 plus 0 0.9 n uh, bring all the n's on one side all the m all the numbers on one side so you have 600 take away 270 and you'll have 1.5 n take away 0 0.9 n remember m and n is the same thing here and this will give me 0 0.6 n and here i will have 330 So n is equal to 3 to t divided by 0 0.6. And according to everybody, this answer was why am I why am I writing lenient? So this is this answer is 550. And you'd want you'd want to write customers after your answer. Every time you write an answer, you must always think, what are we talking about? Dollars, whatever. So we're talking about customers, so it's 550 customers. And that was the end of that. But there was this little, there's just one little interesting part, and question two. So take a look at that. Do question two. This is 2018, by the way. 2018. So people, I've seen people dimming, dimming down the numbers, dwindling to 103. But we still going to do 2019. We say we doing it, so we doing 2019 too. 2019 question one. After you finish, after you do 2019 question one, you call that George. That gonna be three hours. Three hours of question one and twos. Ah, uh, that's a good revision session. Eh? Next, tomorrow we'll be doing question threes and the last question, question ten. So I'm seeing people get nine with the substitution and then make VD subject of the formula. Make VD subject of the formula. People then stick in man. So F is equal to 3 by 2 minus negative 1, as you, over t, t is 1, so this is 3 by 3 over 1, so this is 9, 9 anything, no, just straight up 9, so now if you want to make VD subject of the formula, yeah. Now, the trick, it, the hardest way of making the subject of the formula to come is if you have two of it. Like if you had a V somewhere here, that could be a little weird. You just have to try and get both of the Vs on one side and factorize it out. But this one, not that bad. So, your next line is going to be FT will be equal to, and you expand those brackets, M. Notice I brought up the T one time, MV minus MU. So you'll have MV, I'm going to swap the two sides. I'm skipping some steps here, hopefully people still keep up. Is equal to FT. I'm seeing some answers that looking a little weird. Right, Chelsea. This shall see, not bad. Right, so FT MV, and I'm bringing across the MU is equal to FT. F is capital. Yeah, yeah. This is this is physics. This is this is a formula for force. MV minus MU that's changing momentum over time. So that's like impulse. So, all right. Um, F. Where was I? So this is FT plus MU. And then V would be equal to FT plus MU over M. Are we making this subject any formula again? V, yeah. So it's plus, it's not it's not minus, it's plus. Because when this right Elisha, good to see you still here. When this come across it will be plus, right? I just swap it one time now. So that's the answer there. Next question we are doing is 2019. So, so go online and try and get your 2019 one time. Try and get your 2019 paper. Let's let me try and get my 2019 paper here. 
2019 Jan. It's only Jan. Oh, boss, that I'll be if I just pull out 2019 May paper here. I'll let that go mad. People are starting to take screenshots and things. <laughs> and I'm making news. So, 2019 question one, what was that about? We had a little standard form. We had something in those terms. Hold on, why say bring it up? Um, we had the binary numbers. We'll take a little talk about that. Remember, we wanted to talk about the binary numbers. That's, that's good. That's good that we're doing this. Because we get to talk about ratio a little bit, but we didn't get to talk about the binary numbers. We covered a lot, eh? Because, I mean, it's three hours. A lot would be covered. But we still haven't covered all of consumer arithmetic. Consumer arithmetic so deceptively huge. So make sure you do some revision to, to make sure you finish up on that. And then there was some percentage thing here. And subject of the formula factorizing easy, easy a farmer with a wire. Um from express as E. So yeah, I will pull up the VH, the directly proportional question so we can have a look at that as well. And we are call that George for the night. I feel we are finished like about 12. So, bringing up the question now. Bringing up the question now. It will look a little small, but I'll read it out. It's a little small, but I'll read it. So this is 3.8 times times 10 squared plus 1.7. So rush this question for me. Times 10 to the power of 3. Um, if you see it, I've seen people asking for the link. Link it, link it, link it, link it, link it, link it. If you're asking for the link, just search CSEC maths past papers and 2019 paper would be in the first link, right? Um, I think this guy has it. CSEC, CSEC maths tutor in Google, he has it. CSEC maths tutor. So we call this. Let me see if any answers popping out yet. No answers yet. No answers yet. 2080. 2080, I've seen answer starting to drop. But that's not the full answer there. You know? And even when I do the and did the answers um that I posted earlier this year, right after the exam, when I was writing it over, I left out this part. When I was writing it over. So that's not the full answer, you'd actually get one mark for that in 2080. Patrice, well done. Jacqueline, well done. That's if that's the answer you're looking for there. So if you got 2080, the answer is actually because they want it in standard form. And somehow the standard form was real hiding by. They want it as 2.08 by 10 to the 3. Remember standard form, you find where the point is, and you move the point just before the first number. You count how many times you move the point and you put that there. But if we had moved the point this way, it will be negative. Alright. Next part. In this part we have a half. We have a half multiply by three fifths over three and a half. What's that part? Yeah, so don't forget our standard form. Remember I told you in the first question, when the exam comes on the 15th of May, they would either ask if it's in exact form, standard form, decimal places, significant figures. You need to be ready to know which one to use and how to use everyone. Right. 
So do this fractions, everybody getting 3 and 35, 3 and 3 over 35, giving your answer as a fraction in its lowest term, so you just leave it as 3 and 35. Nobody gave me a decimal, so that's good. So the answer is 3 and 35. Next part. We're coming down to end in here, my battery at 1%. One second, let me get a charge. I don't want to lose the chat, actually. I could see you all on here. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen you all here. Have an extra to one. Great. So, if that die, we still alive. Um, hmm. Next part of the question. This. Express 6 as a binary number, man. So what I'm going to do now is just teach you all how to count in binary. Express 6 as a binary number. Somebody get 20, 10, 35. What are you, going, what are you, what are you seeing? What are you really seeing? Buddy? And somebody, somebody get something else. 110, base 10. Very good. Very good. There is 0, 1, 1, base 2. No, that's not correct. So just a little tip on bases. Rather than learn of the conversions, you can learn to count in bases it, binary. And we'll, I'll just use that to solve this question. So you have 0, then you have 1, then you have to go again because you run out of numbers. In binary numbers, you can't say 2 when you have 2 digits, so 0, 1. So then you'll have 10, 11. And you run out again. Then you'll have 100, 101, 110, 111. And you run out again. So then you'll have 1000, 1001, 1010. And you see that little pattern playing off here, here, here. Uh, 1,000, 1,1, and then 1,1,0,0, and 1,1. So this is like from here, repeating back now. So this is 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and then 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then it goes again, back here. So you notice what's happening here, right? 2, 4, 8. Because that's binary. And this is actually 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the answer, by the way, for the question. 7, 8, 7, 8. And this will go on all the way up to um, 15. And then you'll come back with 16 being 1, 0, 0, 0, and another 0. So you, you understand the pattern, you understand what works with binary, how it happens. Um, let me just scroll down. Why they say elapsed time is, is actually six hours. But we wasn't here for six hours. Anyhow. So yeah, that's how binary works. Let's 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 finish up. John bought a car for this value of the car depreciates 8% each year. How much will it be? We did a question like this already. Um, so what you want to do is work out 8% of this, take it away, and then work out 8% again. Or the shortcut that I show you is that you can assume 92% since 100 take away 8, so you've got 92% of that, and then you do it again. Right? Somebody want me to do over the binary. Okay, I'll just run it through again. I'm lost with binary, I don't understand. Oh, a lot of people didn't catch the binary. Now there's a formula for the binary, right? So you'll have to check it out. What I'll do, I will definitely do a one video tutorial on binary numbers as a whole. But what I'm showing you how to do here is how to think and count, because that will be tested in your multiple choice or something. That could be thrown at you. How binary really works. For example, I'm going to wipe this. If I didn't really want to wipe your all off, bro. Well, I use the eraser. If 
I was counting in base 3. This is what would happen. I'd have 0, 1, 2. I can't say 3 because I'm counting in base 3. I can only use the first 3 digits. So I'll have to start over here. <clears throat> 10. And by the way, this is 1, 2, 3 in real in real terms. And this here will be this here will be 4. No, sorry. I, I, I made a mistake. Sorry, sorry. This is 0, 1, 2. And this here will be 3. So um, I'm looking at 9 going to come here. Because 3 squared will go up again. Right. Let, let's see what will happen. 1, um, 1, 1, 1, 2. Then this is going to be 2, 0, 2, 1. Two, two, and then I reach a nine, which will be a hundred. So this is like counting in base three. I don't know if I'm confusing people more or helping you out here, but this is like counting and in base three. So and if I have to transfer it back to decimal, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So like seven in base three is actually twenty one, but I don't really think twenty one is actually say two one because this is really mean this it's not like decimals eight in base three will be two two eight um six in base three will be two zero and let's go back to let's go back and see the base one counting remember sorry not base one base two counting or binary as a binary number this means base two and six here is in base ten the normal way we know know how to count so in counting in, 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 in binary, you start off with 0, then you hit 1, then you hit 1, 0, because you run out. Well, as soon as you run out, you have to go again, then hit 1, 1, and you run out. Because you can't say 1, 2. You can't do anything again, so you need to start over with more zeros. Then you go again. And then you run out. So you have to start over with more zeros. I know the students who probably were on par for on par for getting a one or a two. This would really help. This kind of this technique of understanding what it is about will really help. Alright? And then we go again. But before we go again, let's count in base 10. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's the answer to the question. And just very quickly, if I go again, this will be 1,000, and this will be 1,001, 1,010, and so on. And it just goes on. Alright, so this depreciation here, this depreciation question, you depreciate it by 92% at first. Basically, is 92% squared. But we can repeat the calculation. Times 92%, 0 0.92. 65000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, that. So the first value of the car, the first depreciation on actually be 59800. And they depreciate it again. And you get 5501. 55016. So, so if you hit that next. 92 or 92 percent this is 92 percent and not like a multiplier in that it goes to five and i'm seeing answers five five zero one six five five zero one six is what i get yes that's correct five five zero one six zero zero great job we're reaching down to the end. I think this is the last slide here that's going to come in. Woo! Those of you all who made it, bosses. The table below shows the results obtained by students in a CSEC mathematics examination. The maximum mark for each paper is given in the third column of the table. The term as a percentage of the student's final mark for the exam. I think this is too easy, you know. So, I think this is too easy. So, I'll leave in this one up to you all. This is the percentage of T and this is the mark here. So, it's like a weighting system.
actually this may not this may not be as easy as as easy as as it looks so to the 90 percent the 90 people <laughs> the 90 people still online all right 62.5 i'm seeing i'm seeing an answer that i remember yeah i've seen people tell me to get some sleep don't worry i, I do this all the time as we up real late um at least around exam season after exam season we take a little rest for the people 62 oh so people asking me to do it all right so this was the percentage obtained but this is the maximum mark so she got 55 percent of 30. that's what is that's what they're saying this was the percentage obtained but the maximum mark is 50. so they got 60 percent of 50 and 80 percent of 20. so you can work out that in other words, put a 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, just so that it'll turn into a percentage or a fraction of a fraction of it and multiply it and you'll get the numbers. 0 0.55 to T. We got 16.5. So she, this means she got 16.5. Is that is that Gail? Uh, they didn't specify. I don't know why I was thinking. Uh, this is the mark that they got. They got 55% of 30. And by the way, in case you notice, this is a, your actual maths exam here. The maths exam, paper 1, the multiple choice is 30. Paper 2 is 50. Paper 3 is this. For those of you who are doing paper 3 or, or um, the SBA, Everybody should have hand up their SP already. Yeah, man, genius kid. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, all those who are from start to finish. Anybody, anybody who was in the start still here? Let me know. Anybody who was in the start still here? Um, and countries. Let me know what countries we still have in the dance. Oh, in her. So it is right. That's what I thought it was. Uh, okay. In her maths exam. So zero point six times 50 it's 30 that's the mark they got there and 0 0.8 times 20 so this is how people kind of figure out there the mark a little bit Trinidad, Grenada, Danny was here Alicia Hussein from Trinidad do I do tutoring? yes um, message me on Instagram came in a little late but you're here Somebody from Africa here. All right. <laughs> um, Jamaica. Beginning to end from Tobago. Florida. People. <laughs> Vinci. I know it have a strong Vinci posse that's be following. Well done, well done, well done. So when you add up this, you'll get the mark that everybody was getting. Well, you get 62 point. 62.5 so this is 62.5 so that's it we call in that we call in that a night that was our three hours or so so for those who went to sleep or the, those who came in kind of late when the live comes back up you'll be able to see everything i'll have to check and make sure what happened because i find us in the elapsed time is six hours here so i don't know if they join two lives or some other old lives or I do, I do some private things to just um make sure everything was running good. I don't want to I mean, just see me in private typing, you know, my passwords and things. Next thing you know, people hack my <laughs> All right. Stream tomorrow. Raise up your hand if you'll be here in the stream tomorrow. All right. Um, on the stream tomorrow, I will try to have my camera set up so that you all could see me doing the construction. Because that is something, there are a few tricks, there are a few tricks with the construction question. A few ways the construction question can come really hard, so we'll be looking at a lot of construction questions. You don't get to see me doing construction. Make sure you have your, um, everything prepared for tomorrow for the construction question, eh? Make sure you have everything prepared tomorrow for the construction question. You have your, um... Compass, geometry set, two types of pencil, the dark and the light, protractor for measuring the angles when you don't draw it, one long clear ruler, and paper like rain. 
and we'll be going through some construction questions. It'll be kind of weird to do that over here, over this. Oh, they will just be watching me because I won't be able to see like pictures of what people do now. That sucks. It should have been a little more interactive, like y'all could send pictures as well. But we'll work with what we have. And after that, we're going into matrices, matrices and vectors. So hopefully I can get the camera set up so we can do the construction, then we'll be doing matrices and vectors. Well done. Trapeziums, yes, I'll be doing trapeziums. But trapeziums is not generally the hardest thing in construction. The hardest thing in construction is when they ask you to buy, make a perpendicular bisector coming down construction. Move slower. Well, the, the, the technical uses go slow at the start and then speed up near to the end. We're going to do those matrices. We're going to do those vectors. Hopefully, we get into transformation matrices as well. Well, it's three hours. So, any other questions? Because I look into pump. I also have to record. I'm going to be. Re I, I partnered with with a web developer who's who has already developed my web page, but it's just me sticking on him. I'm supposed to record a, the whole of the 2019 paper, well described, and put that up, and it'll be available on my website for a very small fee, um, with all the full description. But as you can see, I'm doing it part by part here in the live as well. But that is just to make some money, cause. I had to buy a new laptop and all these other things here too now. So let me press this play add thing here and I'll get cooler add to get some other ad revenue boy. <laughs> I feel like a day. Glad to have 89 of you all still here. Have a good night. Somebody asked me if I'm <laughs> money hungry. Um yeah boy, pampers and thing boy. Milk pampers and milk pampers and milk. Uh, later, hold it down. In your skin, I find you do everything, and that's how you can say you do everything. <laughs> we out there. How are we going to our end in the stream? Stop streaming later.